In this video, we'd like to talk about how to set up a self-propelled sprayer. So it's going to be very similar to the pole type sprayer, however there are a few key differences. But the first thing we need to do is actually go in and hit the wrench button, and we need to add a configuration, so we're going to hit the add button, and then we're going to add an application configuration. We're still doing a single product application, and instead of choosing the tractor as our vehicle, we're going to add a uh, vehicle. It's going to automatically think that we're adding a tractor, but we need to tell it that we're adding a self-propelled sprayer. So the vehicle type is self-propelled sprayer. Hit next. Wants to know the make and the model, so we're going to put in AgChem. And, and we're going to tell it it is a 1184. Alright, hit the next button, wants to know our full swath width and we're going to say it's 90 feet. Hit the next button again and we're going to say we have five boom sections. And we're going to make this one 10 foot and this 23 feet and this one will be 24 feet and 23. And 10. So the way we came up with those is we went out and we actually counted the number of nozzles in each section, multiplied it by our width of each nozzle, and then divided it by 12 to get our feet. Um, once you have that set, go ahead and hit the next button. And then now it wants to know are we using the NORAC UC5 or the Optrix crop sensors. We're going to tell it that we have a NORAC UC5 attached. So we put a check mark into the NORAC UC5. So we're using their automated boom control and controlling it through the Integra. Hit next. It wants to know the vehicle name. We're going to leave that at the AgChem 1184. I'm going to hit OK. Now it wants to know what mod mode are we doing. So we're going to choose the rate and logging control. Our controller, we need to add a new controller because this is thinking that we're choosing the direct liquid that we used in our last sprayer configuration that we set up, but we need to use a new button, so we need to hit the add. What we're doing is a direct command, liquid product control. Now it wants to know our pulses per gallon, and again we're going to have a 782, so if it's a raven, which it is a raven on the rogator, we need to divide that number by 10, so we'll put in 78.2, 782. Hit the OK button, hit the Next. Suggested controller name, we're going to change that to uh, Rogator, just because we don't want to have two of them the same in the system. And OK, check mark. Now it wants to know our container, and our container is a 1200 gallon tank. Again, Remember to change your units down here to gallons. And then now it wants to know our container name. We're just going to call it product tank. And it is located on the uh, vehicle instead of the implement because it's actually on the self propelled vehicle itself. Okay, we're using GPS and radar as our backup. And there's our configuration. Now we have. Uh, our new configuration in here, which is the AgChem 1184 Rogator. We're going to go into Manage the Equipment, and we're going to go now to the vehicle, and we're going to highlight the 1184, and we're going to put in our GPS offsets. When we set up the configuration for the pole type sprayer, it asked us what our offset was from the area of application to the hitched point. It never asked us that when we set this vehicle up. So since this is the first time we're setting the vehicle up, we have to go in and put our GPS offsets. So it wants to know how far our GPS antenna is from the rear axle. We went ahead and we measured that, and it's 65 inches in front of the fixed axle. Our antenna location from the center line, it's right in the center, so we're going to leave that at the same. We measured our height, and it was 135 inches. And the mount, we need to put in how far our boom is from the rear axle or the pivot point of that machine. So go out and measure. So it was 89 inches. So we put in 89 inches. And the dispensing location is actually behind the rear axle. 
On a Hagee sprayer, it would be in front of the rear axle. On a Rogator or a John Deere or a Case, it's going to be behind the rear axle. So make sure that you have behind. Go ahead and hit the OK or the Next button. Now, one last thing that we need to do is we need to go to our controller and go to the controller tab, go to the Rogator, and hit controller settings. Then we come in here and we hit our control valve settings. We need to tell it what type of control valve we are working with. Most of the Rogators are using a PWM valve. So you hit the uh, drop down and we're either using a PWM 12 volt or a PWM ground. Okay, Just like the inline servo and the bypass servo, the 12 volt and the ground are going to work backwards from each other. If you look in the install instructions that you get with the uh, kits from Ag Leader, it will tell you what these settings need to be for each model of sprayer that is made out there. So it will give you a good idea of what one you need to choose. So go to that sheet, see which one you need to choose. It's going to tell us for a Rogator that we need a 12 volt uh, PWM valve. Then it wants to know the PWM frequency. That frequency should be listed on your PWM valve somewhere. Ag Leader will give you a value that uh, they think should be for that machine. So if you go to the sheet, it'll tell you that a Rogator should be 120. Then our gain, it'll give you a gain that you should start off with, a zero flow offset, and a PWM standby. 95% of the time, those numbers that Ag Leader gives you are going to be the numbers that you want to enter into this machine. So go ahead and look and see what those numbers are and accept them when you have them entered in. Alright, we just set up our first self-propelled sprayer configuration.